powered by WCTV.TV. Eyewitness News at 530 starts now. Tech companies are building artificial intelligence into more devices from smartwatches to surgical tools. We'll take a look at where AI is headed next. Plus today, marking three years since the Decatur County Sheriff's Office lost one of their own. A look at how the South Georgia community is remembering Captain Justin Bedwell. But first, controversial move today. The Florida House passing a bill to lower the minimum age of buying a rifle or shotgun in the state from 21 to 18. Thanks for joining us tonight at 530, everybody. I'm Abby Walton. Zach has the night off. This bill passing the Republican-controlled House 76 to 35. This bill would roll back restrictions placed into law in 2018 after the deadly mass school shooting in Parkland. Federal law bans anyone under 21 from buying handguns. House Democrats citing the Parkland shooting as the reason to keep this law in place. However, supporters pointing to Second Amendment rights and the need for people to defend themselves. We have the power here to stop those types of tragedies from happening. But this bill brings us back in time. It puts us more at risk and worst of all, puts our kids at risk. Every American has the right to defend themselves. That's why it's the Second Amendment. We need to do more to make sure Americans are protected against any threat at any time. While the House has moved on this issue, the Senate has not. Senate President Kathleen Pasadomo has repeatedly said they do not have a similar bill. Now, since there's no companion bill, that means the proposed age change will not pass during this year's legislative session. Happening today in Georgia, closing arguments wrapping up within the last hour over an effort by former President Trump and several of his co-defendants in the Georgia election interference case to disqualify Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and her office. Now, this all stems from allegations Willis had a romantic relationship with Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade. The defense argued Willis was paying Wade while they were dating, calling it a conflict of interest. They also accused Wade and Willis of lying on the stand when it came to the timeline of the relationship. The case is now in the hands of the judge who said he'll make a decision in the next two weeks. Staying in Georgia today, marking three years since the Decatur County Sheriff's Office lost one of their own. Captain Justin Bedwell was killed in the line of duty after his patrol car was ambushed by gunfire during a car chase. The Decatur County Sheriff's Office posting this picture to its Facebook page. A sea of ribbons popping up all over Bainbridge in Captain Bedwell's favorite color, Tennessee orange. A way to honor and remember a husband, stepfather, and son and friend. In May of 2022, I had the honor of being with Captain Bedwell's family, friends, and colleagues as they attended National Police Week in D.C. At that time, Captain Bedwell's name was unveiled on the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Wall. A way to remember the thousands of men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of keeping us safe. All right, let's take a live look outside our weather window over Island View Park. Ugh, not the best day to be outside. You still some, see some people out there, a guy out there going to walk on the pier. Chief Meteorologist Mike McCall joining us now. And it's just kind of been a gray, drizzly kind of day. And unfortunately, it looks like a sign of things to come this weekend, Mike. At least for part of it, Abby, yes. But but it's kind of good news, bad news. Uh, I still think that the best chances of rain will be this evening and overnight. And so by tomorrow morning, we'll have already started kind of turning the corner.